talk about how you utilize that method as opposed to refinancing out because now we're in a situation this is recorded in 2022 where the rates are going up to the roof yeah a lot of people are caught with their pants down like even for me i'm not going to be able to i'm not going to not that I'm not going to be able to refi, but I've got like a 2.5% rate on my primary right now. I'm just like, there's no point in refining out of that. The to a six? No. So yeah. talk about your HELOC strategy. Sure. So I'm going to do a little picture here for your people. So that, oh, I'm going to have to take off my screen. So let's say that you refinance. Let me take off my background here. Take it all right. off. This is not OnlyFans. All right. So you have $100,000 <laughs> in equity, right? Okay. And you can correct me if I'm wrong because I'm not the smartest dude at the table. So please, if I'm wrong, I beg you, Brian, tell me. Is that fair? Yeah, I trust your me. Your listeners will you. be like, Brian, you should have said something. If, if, if Okay, is that fair? Yeah, it's okay. You've got a pink note card. I trust you. All right, cool. Yeah, this is exactly how I run my deals too. I'm not even kidding. Run like, it. Okay. So for people deals. listening, we got a pink note card out. Okay, we got $100,000 in equity. Okay, $100,000 in equity. You walk into the bank, they're going to give you at best 30% of refi of that. At best, am I right or wrong? Like 70%. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. 70% of a hundred grand is $70,000, right? Yeah. So you're going to walk out of the bank with $70,000. I don't care what, if you bought it cheap, if you did this, I don't care what you did. If you have a hundred thousand in equity, they're going to give you 30%. You're going to walk out with a $70,000 check, right or wrong? Yeah. Okay. So you're going to walk out with a $70,000 check. You're going to take a cute picture for Instagram, and then you're going to walk right back into the bank and you're going to deposit that $70,000 check right or wrong. Correct. Okay. So you're going to walk right back into the bank and you're going to deposit $70,000. And the moment the next month hits, you're going to get a bill for what? I don't know. People want to know. You're going to get a bill for your interest plus P you're going to get for interest and principal for the refinance, right or wrong. Correct. So when I heard that, I was like, okay, wait a minute. I'm the smartest guy in the tool shed, but you're telling me that I come into the bank and hand you my hundred thousand dollar equity. You hand me back 70,000. I walk right back in and put it in your bank account. And then I got to pay you back for my own equity. And I lost 30%. Uh Oh, now We're I'm pickle. not the smartest kid and I made C's and D's in high school and that college degree should have two people's names on it, but that shit don't add up. What's the alternative Felipe? Let him know. Boom. Drops the mic, line of credit. So then I asked my banker, I said, man, I, I love you, buddy. And I've been with you since I'm 16, but I'm not doing that. My banker's awesome. Mr. King, huge shout out. He said, there's another option. I said, all right, what do you got? He's like, I can give you a line of credit on 70,000. I said, okay. And I said, well, how much do I owe you? He's nothing until you use it. And I was like, okay, so it's my line of credit. He goes, yes. Leveraged against what? The rental. Okay. And your second lien? Yes, second lien. Great. What if I don't want to use it until three weeks from now or three months from now or six months? He goes, we'll put it on to 10 years. Okay. When do I got to pay? He's like, only when you use it. And with a refi, you pay in the next 30 days. What if I don't use it? Well, you still got to pay me. Okay. So a line of credit, I get the same access to the same money. The only step we're missing is you don't give me a check and I don't get a fancy picture for Instagram. He goes, yes. I said, All right, so what if I want to draw $10,000? He goes, draw $10,000 and you're only going to pay interest on $10,000. Not the whole thing. I said, not the whole thing. So I did it. And then I took out 10 grand and I looked at him. He goes, All right, you owe me interest on 10 grand next month. So I got another 10. Okay, now you owe me interest on 20,000. I put it back. I said, okay, you just owe me the interest now. I was like, so I can come in and take $30,000 as a down payment if I find a deal, when and if I find a deal, and I can fund that down payment myself with that, with that money. And I'm not paying you interest on 70 grand, just the interest on the, what I pull out. And he goes, yes. I was like, okay. So I did. And I've built my whole portfolio on a $150,000 line of credit. I've built about $5 million <laughs> on the same. Line. Now here's the last question that I'll have your buyers ask you ask themselves. And I'll let you answer it first. When you refinance a property, who do you pay it back to every single month? When you refinance the property, the bank. Mm -hmm. Okay. When you have a line of credit and you're paying back the, when you're paying back what you owe, who are you paying? You. To? It's your line of credit. If mm. That doesn't like tickle your fancy. I don't know what will in real estate. Man, the fancies are being tickled right now. Everyone's, everyone's fancies, fancies are being, being tickled. tickled. The fancies biggest question tickled. that you haven't asked me is how do you pay it back? 
So let's say you take out 20 grand, you buy a property, great, it's cash flowing five, six, seven hundred dollars. But how do you pay back the line of credit? So, in my opinion, <clears throat> the line of credit is it allows you to become successful really quick because you still have to hustle. You still have to work to pay off the line of credit. So you use the cash flow from the property and your W-2 job or your side hustle or whatever you're doing, and you attack the line of credit as quick as possible. And what's cool is let's say I take out 20 grand, I pay off 10 grand, but I want to use another 30. You can do that. So I found another deal. And now I have two properties giving me, I don't know, $700 each. That's 1400 bucks. Plus I add another thousand dollars for my W-2. That's $2,400. We pay off the line of credit in a year. Next year, I can buy two rentals. The year after that, three rentals because the cash flow continues to add up. You're not going to buy assets that don't give you money. Mm -hmm. You use those to strategically pay off the line of credit. And it took me five years to become financially independent. The year after that, I became a millionaire. And now we're in year seven and I've hit five million. So it literally went from five years to five, one year to a millionaire, then the next year, five million. And I'm assuming I'm just going to keep doubling. So you don't really know what you're talking about. Not at all. I have no idea what I'm talking about. I do it on the back of sticky notes. We do it on the back of sticky notes, people. That's the pink sticky note strategy with Felipe Mejia. I don't understand. No, I love people it. Now, here's the, now, let me say this before everyone jumps on my throat. Jumps down my throat. What do white people say? Like two, well, one in white the hand. White people say a lot. What is it? Two in the two in the bush, one in the hand. What is it? I love that one, but I never know how to. Use. That's not how it is. Is it? I promise you, it is. No, two in the bush is one. Of, dude, I don't even know what that means. Like, if I can keep going, honest. Felipe, you're on a okay, roll. Cool. I'm just you <laughs> so, <laughs> there is a place for refinancing. People have just misused it. You refinance assets that are five units or more, or so forth, because those are judged on the rental income, not based on the value of the property. Okay. Okay. That is when the refinance happens. It's just that people are greedy and they want their money back. And then they refinance like single family homes. Now you would only refi single family home if you can get a better interest because you can up your cash flow. So for example, remember I told you that I buy for cash flow. So why in the hell would it make sense to refi a 2.5 to a six to get some money back, but I'm not going to cash flow. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. So what do you do? So here's something I've ran into. It's a, a little bit more difficult to get lines of credit from my experience, at least on rental properties, as opposed it's to a not, primary residence. It's just residence. you've been asking for a quesadilla at a burger joint. Okay, keep going. Okay. So you don't go to a Mexican restaurant and order a burger, do you? No. That would be weird. Unless you're very white. Unless you're very white, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you're so dumb. <laughs> no, you go to a Mexican restaurant, you order a quesadilla, right? Yeah. Okay, so banks are the same way. Banks either make their money on credit cards or loans or home loans or lines of credits or refis. You, they're just not going to plaster it on their wall because unless you wanted a refi, you're not going to go to that bank. So they want, they, they want everyone to come in, right? So you, it's up to you to find the right bank that's going to do it. And part of that is knowing what to ask. A HELOC is on your home where you sleep. A line of credit leveraged against an asset is going to be called a line of credit. And those two letters make a big difference. So what lenders would you say would be the best case where the asset is located? So in Nashville, Tennessee is where my rentals are. I go to banks that are local to Nashville, like First City, First State, Fifth Third, Pinnacle, whatever. And then you just ask them for a line of credit against your asset. Correct. And they'll do it against the equity of the asset. Mm. Most of the time, you're not going to call one. You'll call five or six to find the right one. Okay, cool. So walk someone through that is listening to this right now. Maybe they have a primary, maybe they have the, a rental and they've got some equity in it. They know that it's there and they've been racking their brain on how to compete in today's housing market. And now they hear this and they're removing the, the first two letters from the line of credit. They're taking the he out the he log. What does that conversation look like when they're calling the banks? Yeah. So if it's an asset, like not your house, if it's like rental a, property, a rental property, one, two, three main street, you're going to call the bank and you're going to say, Hey, Brian, it's just Felipe. Um, I own one, two, three main street and my property is that's appreciated. It's worth 400,000. I have a $180,000 mortgage. Would you be interested in doing a line of credit on my, on the equity of my home at 70%? And then they'll say, yeah, or no. And typically you're going to rule of thumb. If they're like, yeah, let's talk about it. Or I have someone in the office. That's a good sign. A bad sign is when, oh, okay. Yeah. Let me get my manager to call you back, which means I need to figure it out or I've never heard of it. Or we don't have that person in this office, but let me forward you to somebody that does. Mm, they don't have a person in the office. They don't know what the hell you're talking about. So those are some of the things that I listen to when I'm talking, when I'm calling a conversation, just so I don't waste my time with the bank. If they don't have someone basically in-house that can handle it, then just move on to the next bank. Yeah, that's fair because Diamond doesn't.
Like we're just gonna have yeah. to find the best bank yeah, for us. 100%. Okay. Like I literally cool. went to the bank before this call. Actually, it's pretty funny that we're talking about this. Went to the bank and I paid off my thirty thousand dollar line of credit that I had. I have one hundred fifty thousand. The house is now worth like four hundred, or maybe a three fifty. I, I haven't run the comps on it in a while. But I asked her for an, for a like a higher line of credit, and she'll literally bump it up to like maybe two twenty, two twenty five. And then you can just use that to take down bigger deals. My man, and that's why I say line of credit is super safe because it doesn't let you outdo yourself. Mm. Yeah, because you're not leveraging your down payment. You're le you're using your down payment to leverage. Yep. Love it. All right. Hell yeah, brother. There we go. We're cooking. We're cooking now, man. This has been it's been fantastic. So two two questions to finish out. Yeah, dude. First question is, so what's the next what's the next mountaintop for you? What fast forward three three years, five years, vivid vision. What's going to be your next Mount Everest? Dude, like I said, my goal is 100 millionaires in the next 10 years. So that's, I'm focused. I don't really have anything else. I focus on my family and my wife, my kid. Those are just non-negotiables. But my biggest mountain is I want to make 100 millionaires in the next 10 years. And that's, I can't do that one at a time typically. So I have to create systems and businesses around helping people to do that. Okay. Awesome. So if somebody's listening to this and they want to be one of those 100 millionaires, where do they reach out to? Where do they find uh, you? There's only three places. So either Rat Race, REI Call Center, or become a one-on-one -on -one client. The one-on-one -on -one clients, I'm super, super selective. Uh, it's not about the money. It's about, do I like you? If I'm just being 100% honest, <laughs> I got to be with you for a year. And most of my one-on-one -on -one clients <laughs> have been, become millionaires in the first year that we work together. Probably all of them. I think I have a perfect track record. Yeah. Okay. And there are they, but where are they starting from? They starting from square one? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like I have debt type of square one. This man's swinging for the fences. I love it. I love it.